Good evening. Glad you're here this evening to worship God. And we welcome everybody here. If you're visiting, we're glad you're here with us. From cover to cover of the Bible, we see Jesus. In Genesis chapter 1, in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. Revelation 22, verse 21, the last verse of the Bible. The grace of the Lord Jesus be with all. Amen. Now the invitation. All of the Bible is about Jesus. God's revelation to us, we would know the only true God and Jesus Christ whom he has sent. I've had a series of lessons, a short series of lessons from the, the prayer of Jesus in John 17. And so some of this is review or you may hear some of the same things. And besides, I have nothing new to say that's not been preached before. This is a time of year where people give gifts, where a lot of the world is thinking about Jesus more than usual, and we should be glad that they are. But a lot of times they just know partial knowledge of God. They know some stories of the birth. We can be the same. Um, we want to be a people that keep knowing, learning to know more about our great and awesome God. I love the song we just sang I have requested it. It's one of my favorites. And I get choked up every time I sing it because it's just majestic. Because our God is awesome. He should just cause us to marvel. He should cause us to want to obey Him. Many years ago when I was a young boy, I can't remember how old I was, but during this time of the season, some lady gave the Heatwell family present. It was a time of giving and so we opened up the present and it was the game of life. How many of you know the game of life? How many of you played the game of life? How many of you have played it as often as I have? You don't know. <laughs> my dad hated that game. I could not get my dad. I think he played half of a game and he quit. I don't know why. I mean, he's a farmer. It's like There's no cows in this thing. There's no milking. There's no burning weeds. I mean, there's no A in ditches. There's no setting tubes. And, well, that's in there. It's not a real life. I don't know. He just wouldn't do it. My brothers and I played it often. And you have this wheel in the middle. And you spin it. And you get the number. And, and you, you go to college or you don't go. Well, you can choose at the beginning. But you choose, you know, which car you're going to drive and what color it's going to be. There's a few choices you have, but most of it is chance. And you're spinning that thing around. And, and the whole goal of that game is to get to the end of life. And you win by being what? A millionaire. And not maybe more than a millionaire because you've got to have more than the other millionaire. Right? The whole purpose of that game, that gift was, it's about fun and we've had lots of fun through the years. My wife and I, we write on there all the time who, who played the game, who won the game. It's just a family tradition. But there's nothing about that game of life that talks about the God of life. Nothing. It's just secular. And you only win by having the most money. Sounds like a lot of people in this world. In John 17, before Jesus went to the cross, he prayed the Father, and he prayed things of which we have seen in the Bible have been recorded for us. It's a high prayer of God to God. Jesus spoke these things, and lifting up his eyes to heaven, he said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son, that the Son may glorify you, even as you gave him authority over all flesh, that to all whom you have given him he may give eternal life. This is eternal life they may know you, the only true God and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. Now, I had a lesson about this a couple weeks back, but I'm kind of delving into it a little bit more. So let's consider a couple things. So Jesus spoke these things. And eternal life is knowing the only true God. And if 
knowing the only true God is eternal life, isn't it really important that we know this God? Isn't it really important that we know Him? It's not just about knowing about Him, it's knowing Him. Oh man, that doesn't look very good. Anyway, that's up there. By His creation, we learn to know some about God, right? Genesis chapter 1, we've read that so many times. In John chapter 1, the same book of which prayer is, in John 1, and, and what's your name? George. I almost said Caleb. You, you said Caleb this morning. I blew my little brain off. But George talked about this this morning. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through Him. Apart from Him, nothing came into being that has come into being. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. Jesus was in the beginning, so we see Him in verse 1 of the Bible and the last verse of the Bible. From first to last, the Alpha and the Omega. Isn't that amazing? Jesus is seen throughout the Bible. So God created the heavens and the earth. Turn your Bible to Hebrews chapter 1. There's another scripture we've read many times. But I'm not going to apologize for reading again because it's the Word of God. It's part of His revelation to help us know who He is. In chapter 1 of Hebrews, God, after He spoke long ago to the fathers and the prophets in many portions and in many ways in these last days, has spoken to us in His Son, whom He appointed heir of all things, through whom also He made the world. There it is again. He is the radiance of His glory, the exact representation of His nature, upholds all things by the word of His power. When He had made purification of sins, He sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high. Jesus is the creator. And they created the world. And through the world we can learn something about God. Look at uh, Romans chapter 1. You have your Bible there. Romans chapter 1. In verse 18, for the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all unrighteousness, all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth in unrighteousness, because that which is known about God is evident within them, for God made it evident to them. How did he do that? Verse 20. For since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes, his eternal power and divine nature have been clearly seen being understood through what has been made, so that they are without excuse. For even though they knew God, they did not honor Him as God or give thanks, but they became futile in their speculations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Professing to be wise, they became fools, exchanged the glory of the incorruptible God for an image in the form of corruptible man, and of birds, four-footed animals, and crawling creatures. Therefore God gave them over in the lust of their hearts, to impurity, so their bodies would be dishonored among them. For they exchanged the truth of God for a lie, and worshipped and served the creature rather than the Creator, who is blessed forever. Amen. The creation teaches us about God, but it is not the full revelation of God. The creation itself is awesome, and it should make us marvel, but in it alone, by looking at Animals and plants and bugs and stars and galaxies and I mean all that stuff is too big for my little brain to fathom. By looking at that, it does not teach me everything I need to know about God. Is that not correct? Turn your Bibles to Job, please. Job. Chapter 38. Verses 1 through 7. Then the Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind and said, Who is this that darkens counsel by words without knowledge? Now gird up your loins like a man, and I will ask you, and you instruct me. 
Where were you when I laid the foundation of the earth? Tell me if you have understanding. Who set its measurements? Since you know, or who stretched the line on it? Or what were its, were its bases sunk? Or who laid its cornerstone? When the morning stars sang together and all the sons of God shouted for joy. So God is saying here, you don't know much unless I tell you. You really don't know a lot unless I reveal who I am. Isn't it man's tendency to, you know, we grow up and we start really innocent like these little children. Wes, you want to hold him up? He's got his binky in his mouth. He looks so innocent. He looks like a football fan. And someday he's going to grow up and be a man of God with our help. Right? As he keeps learning with the knowledge of God. When you're little, you don't know everything. You've got to be, keep learning, keep learning. A lot of us are little, and we need to keep learning and learning. I need to keep learning. God is saying, you don't really know a lot about me until I let you know. A lot of times man thinks he knows so much when he knows so little. Well, let's look at the next thing. Job 38. Look at verse 35. Start verse 34. Can you lift up your voice to the clouds so that an abundance of water will cover you? Can you send forth lightnings that they may go and say to you, here we are. I just like that verse. God is telling Job, you can't do that, but I can. I can tell the, the ocean, I can tell the ocean to do stuff, I can tell the sky to do stuff, I can tell lightning to strike there, and it's going to say, here we are, God. We're at your bidding. We will strike where you want us to strike. God's knowledge really is too wonderful for me. But I need to keep trying to learn. I need to know more and more about this awesome God that we serve. So how do we know the only true God? It's certainly by nature, but there's more. It's by the words that God speaks. And I think George talked about that today too. The words of God are important. Jesus is the creator. He is the word of God. And when he speaks, things happen. God's words, Jesus' words, are not just babblings. They're not nothings. My brother Mike and I, in our younger years, used to have fun just saying silly things to each other. Just make us, we would make each other laugh, you know. We just say silly things that make no sense together. And I'm not going to give an example because I might mess up and say something I shouldn't. But we would say just rambling things and, and we'd say them back to each other and just, just words that were words, but they made no sense put together. God is never like that. God's words always have sense and direction and purpose. They are not idle words. In Hebrews chapter 1, we just read about that. God speaks to us through the prophets in many portions and in many ways. God takes the initiative Tell us who he is. And that's called grace. The grace of God to bestow on us knowledge of who he is. God took the initiative. Even the Garden of Eden. I mean, you and I marvel that Adam and Eve could be in the presence of God himself and still listen to a liar and think that his counsel is better than the Creator's. But men do the very same thing today. Satan has a system of knowledge that he's putting out on people, and it's twisted, it's a little bit of lies, it's a little bit of truth. And he's very successful. He's really good at it. Very good at it. 
God is not silent, and by His grace He spoke. God spoke to the prophets, and they spake, spoke to man. By the way, you know, it doesn't say here that priests. God spoke, you know, through the prophets and the priests. No, the priests speak to God for us. The prophets spoke from God to us in many portions and in many ways. The Old Testament is not fairy tales. The Old Testament is not men's tales. They are words from the Creator Himself. I recently did some work for a man, and uh, he, he works out of town sometimes. And, and while he was out of town, he was in a restaurant, and some guy saw him eating there alone, and he's, he walked to, to him and said, I don't know why he came up to him, but he just st struck up a conversation about the Bible. And this customer of mine said, yeah, he came up to me and he just started talking. He says some things about God. And, and, he's, and then uh, this guy said, well, you know, I've been thinking about going back to church. My customer was telling me this. And then the guy said, oh, no, don't do that. Do not go back to church. That New Testament stuff makes no sense. It's, it's nothing. It's just lies. What you need to do is just pay attention to Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. That's where everything is. You just focus on that. You don't need to go to church. You don't need all that New Testament stuff. The New Testament is basically garbage. There are people actively out there seeking to devour other men. God, or Satan, is always trying to mess us up in the world. It can be little things as well. God's knowledge is revealed in the Scriptures, and we need to be those who listen to it. The Old Testament uh, was stepping stones. It's, it's learning. We learn about God gradually through the Old Testament. You know, Jesus came. He said, I did not come to abolish the law, but to fulfill it. Fulfill it. Matthew 5, verse 7. If you would turn your Bible to Second Peter chapter one. Second Peter chapter one. Let's see, where am I? Well, I'm going back. Second Peter chapter one. Verses 16 through 21. Well, I got to be in Second Peter, not First Peter. Use that one right there. For we did not follow cleverly devised tales when we made known to you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but we were eyewitnesses of His Majesty. For when He received honor and glory from God the Father, such an utterance as this was made to Him by the majestic glory. This is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. We ourselves heard this utterance made from heaven when we were with Him on the holy mountain. So we have heard the prophetic word made more sure, to which you do well to pay attention as to a lamp shining in a dark place until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your hearts. But know this first of all, that no prophecy of Scripture is a matter of one's own interpretation. For no prophecy was ever made by an act of human will, but men moved by the Holy Spirit spoke from God. We are the people that believe that. We believe that the Old Testament Scriptures, the prophets spoke from God Himself. And we do well to listen to those words. They mean what they said. God means what He said. I marvel sometimes at Adam and Eve again. But see, they chose to listen to another message. There may be some here today or tonight that are listening to some other message that is messed up about the Word of God. Maybe you don't believe Jesus is the Son of God. Maybe you don't believe He is God. All these verses we've been talking about have shown in some form or another that Jesus was in the beginning and He's the Creator. He's also the Savior. 2 Timothy 3.16 says all Scripture is inspired by God, right? All Scripture profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, for training in righteousness, 
that the man of God may be adequate to put for every good work. So why is knowing the only true God essential? I put a couple of points on here. You'll get ahead of me, and that's okay. But it's essential for acceptable worship. Remember in Acts chapter 17 when Paul's going through Athens and he sees all these idols? He says, I can see you're very religious. I saw there's an idol that says, to an unknown God. And he says, that unknown God, let me tell you about him. And there he started preaching about Jesus and the resurrection. Some sneered, some believed, and some said, we'll listen to you more about that later. In John chapter 4, verse 24, God says, well, Jesus says, God is spirit. Those who worship him must worship in spirit and in truth. So, just like the men of Athens, they could, they could worship weird things and any old God, but it's not the right worship. True knowledge of God shows true worship. We need to believe that God is spirit, and we need to worship in spirit and in truth. That's why the things that we do here, we take seriously. That's why week after week, we want to partake of the Lord's Supper, because it's in the book. That's why we sing, because it's in the book. That's why we listen to the Word of God, because that's what we see in the book. That's why we pray. That's why we give. It's also why we don't do some other things, because they're not written in the book. Well, in Exodus 32, you probably know where I'm headed there. The first high priest, Aaron, allowed the people to influence him and forget the knowledge he had of God so far. And they said, we want a God. Where's this Moses? He hadn't come back. We want a God. Make us a God. Aaron said, okay. Rip that stuff out of your ears and I'll make you one. Isn't that crazy? Here's a man who knew God to some degree. His knowledge was not perfect, but he knew in the Almighty. He saw what God had done, and he, he fashions a, a calf out of this gold. I don't know how long that took to do that. And then he says, then the people see it, and they say, Behold, the God that led you out of Egypt. What an insult to the God of heaven. It doesn't even look like him. That thing was made by man God was not made by anyone. It's just amazing to me how easily people are led astray and they think that their devices are as good or better than that of God. Knowing the true God is essential for acceptable attitudes towards God. Well, let's just turn over to Job 40. I... I just like Job for some reason this week, so there's a lot of verses we could use that I could use, but I didn't. So if I'm not using your favorite verses, uh, that's just the way it goes. Okay, so Job. I like what the Lord says here in Job 40, verse 1. Then the Lord said to Job, Will the fault finder contend with the Almighty? Let him who reproves God answer it. That's crazy. I mean, People are finding fault with God all the time. So what are they going to do? Reprove Him for being who He is? I'm pretty sure I shared this with you one other time or two other times or 20 other times. When I was seeking to know the truth, I uh, had been going to church somewhere else and I asked my brother to go with me to talk to this preacher about some things, specifically baptism. And this man got so mad at the end of the whole thing, he was red-faced, and he says, I will, I will go to my grave not believing you need to be baptized to be saved. And he was a preacher, not in the church. But that stuck with me so powerfully. I was like, it says it right here. God's Word says it right here. Why was Jesus Himself baptized to fulfill all righteousness? He never sinned, but it was the right thing to do. And He says, go, teach, baptize Him in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Do it! 
And that's what we see people doing. And then when this preacher says, I will go to my grave, believing you don't have to be baptized, they go to heaven. You see, people are despising the Word of God and they think they know better than what the true God says is true. Are we going to go and contend with the Almighty? Who of you wants to contend with the Almighty? But I would like to say this, that if you have not yet been baptized in Christ, you're banking that you can. If you've not been obedient to God Almighty and what He says for us, His revelation of who He is and His love for us, I send my own Son on the cross to die for you, and you are rejecting that? There is no hope. There is no way to heaven. According to the knowledge of of God we have in the Scriptures. In John chapter 12, verse 44 through 50, let's turn back over there real quick. John chapter 12. And Jesus cried out and said, He who believes in Me does not believe in Me, but in Him who sent Me. He who sees me sees the one who sent me. I have come as light into the world so that everyone who believes in me will not remain in darkness. If anyone hears my sayings and does not keep them, I do not judge him, for I did not come to judge the world, but to save the world. He who rejects me and does not receive my sayings has one who judges him. The word I spoke is what will judge him at the last day. For I did not speak on my own initiative, but the Father himself who sent me has given me a commandment as to what to say and what to speak. These are the words of God. I know that His commandment is eternal life. Therefore, the things I speak, I speak just as the Father has told me. Just like that. In Mark chapter 16, verses 15 and 16, Jesus said the words of God here. He said to them, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creation. He who has believed and has been baptized shall be saved, but he who has disbelieved shall be condemned. Satan has a belief system as well as God. Not the same. The father of lies is telling us we do not need to be baptized. The father of lies is saying you don't need to do everything God said. The Father of Lies is saying, you can go before the Almighty God who created heavens and the earth, the galaxies, the universe, the oceans, the monsters of the sea. You can go up against that God and you can win without Jesus. We can. Men pay close attention to the devil's revelations. Closing their minds to the hearts, to the heart of God, the love of God, and the grace of God. Satan sells his product at huge discount prices. With him, every day is black. Black, dark, and bleach. Discounted prices. I'll discount the scripture. We'll cut off this one. We'll snip this one out. Discount. You can make it to heaven. We're all going to the same place. I hope not. Unless it's heaven. And the only way we're going to go to the same place is if we obey the same God. And listen to the same message. I'd like to close by reading 1 John chapter 4 about the love of God. 1 John chapter 4. Verse 7 says, Beloved, let us love one another, for love is from God. Everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. The one who does not love does not know God. There's a word about knowing God again. For God is love. By this the love of God was manifested in us, that God has sent His only begotten Son into the world, so that we might live through Him. And this is love. Not that we love God, but that He loved us. 
and sent His Son to be the propitiation for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one has seen God at any time. We, if we love one another, God abides in us, and His love is perfected in us. By this we know that we abide in Him and He in us because He has given us of His Spirit. We have seen and testify that the Father has sent the Son to be the Savior of the world. Whoever confesses that Jesus is the Son of God, God abides in Him and He in God. And we come to know and have believed the love which God has for us. God is And the one who abides in love abides in God and God abides in Him. And by this, love is perfected with us so that we may be we may have confidence in the day of judgment because as He is, so also are we in this world. There is no fear in love. Perfect love casts out fear because fear involves punishment. And the one who fears is not perfected in love. We love because He first loved us. If someone says, I love God and hates his brother, he's a liar. And the one who does not love his brother whom he has seen cannot love God whom he has not seen. And this commandment we have from him, that the one who loves God should love his brother also. We could just keep reading. This is an awesome text. Whoever believes that Jesus is the Christ is born of God, and whoever loves the Father loves the child born of him. By this we know that we love the children of God when we love God and observe His commandments. For this is the love of God, that we keep His commandments, and His commandments are not burdensome. For whatever is born of God overcomes the world, and this is the victory that has overcome the world. Our faith. Who is the one who overcomes the world but he who believes that Jesus is? the Son of God. The book of John, the book of 1 John, are written so that we may know God and that we may know we have eternal life. Did I say everything? Yes. Well, sort of. Essential for eternal life. That's the last slide. Same as the first. With one question added. Do you know Him? If we know Him, we will worship Him. If we know Him, we will listen to Him. If we know Him, we will have faith in Him. If we know His Word, we will know error from truth. If we know Him, we can fight off the schemes of the devil that is after each one of us. Do you know Him tonight? I wish we could just sing that last song again. The one we sang before I started. And just sing it again. Right? Because God is so awesome. It's all about Jesus from first to last. He's the creator. And he created it all. Why would he do that? For people that make up their own gods. He has hope in us. He believes that there will be faithful children of God sprout up from the book that He has written. Are you one of those? Let's stand together and sing. If you have any need, let us know.